Hey guys, I'm Randy. And I'm Daniel. We're two lifelong friends and musicians, but when we're not playing gigs, we like to talk games. And today on the Gaming Gig Podcast, Tango Gameworks has been saved. Devs are told not to expect the next Nintendo console before April of next year. And Valve's unannounced game is one of Steam's most popular titles. Well, guys, welcome to the Gaming Geek Podcast. We are a viewer-driven podcast. We read and react to your comments. Guys, we just crossed 900 subscribers on our YouTube channel, which means 900 are, subscribers? Finally, we are on that last little leg to get to 1,000 subs. So, guys, if you're not already subscribed to the Gaming Geek Podcast, obviously, we'd love you to help us get there. Uh, we just love to talk games. And today... 900. That is three yeah. times 10 squared for Dale, as long as you use your parentheses in the right places. That's insane. That is some interesting math there. Um, but I'm just going to take your word on it. It is. So we're going to start things off today with one of, I think maybe the biggest story uh, this week in the gaming world is Tango Gameworks has been, it was shut down by Microsoft, but now it's been saved, which is just, wild yeah they uh you know they put out the banger that was hi-fi rush and then they were promptly shut down and uh you know like the like the proverbial phoenix randy they have risen from the ashes right it kind of it, it is like the proverbial phoenix right exactly so tango gameworks is most well known for a couple different things they've had uh, a number of series but hi-fi rush was definitely the biggest one I want to say at least it seems to have made the biggest splash and it was their most recent game. I think it was their first like bigger hit, but they had some other stuff like uh Ghostwire Tokyo. That's a game that I particularly enjoyed quite a bit. Mm -hmm. It was really weird, but I liked it a lot. Uh, and then I think other than that, the evil within there was a couple evil within games that I think also got some fairly decent popularity. So they weren't like an unknown studio, right? but it seemed like hi-fi rush was the game that kind of broke them into maybe more of the like every gamer might know of this game yeah i mean i think it definitely feels like you know their high watermark so to speak mm -hmm. at least in recent memory and right. uh i i personally played it and thought it was fantastic you still haven't played it right no i've not played it like i said the only game i've played from them is uh ghostwire tokyo i have been really interested in the evil within games uh they've been on my like list of games to play but i've never gotten around to them mm -hmm. um but no, I have not played Hi-Fi Rush, but a lot of people have. I mean, yeah. it, it did quite well. It did. Which is, makes it even weirder that <laughs> as soon as they put out this game and it does really well, Microsoft just drops them, just like says, we're, we're shutting down uh, Tango Gameworks. Well, it's because they said they wanted, they wanted smaller games that would bring them you know, recognition and, and accolades or whatever. And you know, Hi-Fi Rush and winning a bunch of awards and being badass just wasn't good enough. No. Well, I mean, they weren't like, just to be like really clear about what happened, like <laughs> Xbox shut down a number of Bethesda owned studios. I think it was like maybe four different studios. Mm -hmm, um, I think you're right. The other big one that people would know about would be Arcane Austin, mm -hmm. who had just also recently put out Redfall. And we Redfall. all know how her Red Fail. Did. Oh. <laughs> so that, that game didn't do too hot. Yeah. I remember hearing about Red Fail. Um, Ooh, what a time. What a time that was. Yeah. Nobody wanted but, to play uh, the game with vampires, I guess. No, no one did. But the, the thing that has gotten a lot of people very excited about um, Tango Gameworks getting acquired is that along with this acquisition, which was done by Krafton, which is a, um, a Korean publishing company. Yeah, they make the they cheese, acquired, right? They are the, the people who make the cheese. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Most well known for cheese, less well known for games, but they're you know they're really dabbling in the game market now. Oh, I respect it. Yeah, I mean they kind of go together if you ask me. <laughs> Hundo soon. But so they have not only acquired Tango GameWorks, they have also acquired the rights to the Hi-Fi Rush IP, which mm -hmm. is really exciting because that means that game very likely will see a sequel in the not too distant future. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I really like that. Yeah. And that kind of leads us into our poll where we asked, um, would you be interested in playing a sequel to Hi-Fi Rush? We sure did. And uh, at 21%, people said, yes, I love the first game. 
At 44%, people said, yes, and I need to play the first game. At 7%, people said, no, I gave no craps about Hi-Fi Rush. And at 29%, people said, no, I am just not interested at all. Right, so if you add together the no's, we're looking at about 36% of people saying that they're not interested, but that means that like 60, what does that be, 63%? Are, which I think is a really good number of people who want a sequel to Hi-Fi Rush. So this is 65% plus 36%. So again, results are a little invalidated because that adds up to 101. Yeah. Uh, YouTube, if you add the numbers together on the YouTube polls, they don't always equal 100. <laughs> I think they do some... Uh, they do some you know, rounding. They do some rounding. That's point. all it is. I just like to point it out because I think it's funny. And it kind of, you know, I am a math teacher by day. So these kind of things kind of stick out to me. <laughs> yeah. We just got a live comment in on Twitch uh, from Benjamin who said, I voted no. Very pretty, but not for me. Mm-hmm. It was very pretty. Yeah. And I, I would be curious, like, what about it you think isn't for you? And I wonder, you know, if it's the uh, rhythm game aspect I would highly encourage you to not worry about it, uh, just if that's it. I know that's kind of what it is for Randy. So, yeah, I was about to say, that's exactly what it is for me. I The reason I have not played it is that, historically, I just don't really like rhythm games, mm -hmm. except for like Beat Saber. But Beat Saber is like almost uh, a different Beat, thing than a rhythm game. It's like, I don't know, it's an experience. Beat Saber transcends, man. Beat Saber <laughs> really is so does. fun. I, I only played Beat, Beat Saber one time. It was over at your house for like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. And yes. it was it was pure bliss. That oh, game is so is fun. So, I, I don't know why I never bought it on the on the MetaQuest. I, I you guess should I still have. could. It is so much fun. It is great because it's one of those VR games that's not going to make you motion sick because you don't move. You stay in right. place. So it's a very like approachable VR game. But anyways, I don't want to get off too far off topic because we're not really here to talk about Beat Saber, but... That's what we do, bro. Um, I know. I know that's what we do. But uh, let's let's get into the comments. Uh, Daniel, we got a comment here from Heckvetica, who happens to be a channel member. What? Uh, hit us with that comment. I know. Heck's amazing. Uh, Heck's our buddy. Heck said, Hi-Fi Rush was my game of the year last year. Out of every game I played, I can say it without a trout, <clears throat> sorry, doubt, that Hi-Fi was the most fun I had gaming in a very long while. The controls were spot on, the story was light but interesting, and every character felt fully fleshed out. It's also a game that, due to its style, won't look as aged in the future. Heck, I just want to congratulate you on a very well-written comment and your excellent use of punctuation. You made reading that comment easy. You know, I don't know what it is about YouTube comments, but rarely are, is punctuation used. I know, <laughs> and it makes it makes it hard when you have to read them. <laughs> it's casual. It's a casual thing, you know. It is. It definitely is. Interesting. Heck saying Hi-Fi Rush was his game of the year. That is mm -hmm. some high praise. I know a lot of people loved it. I don't know how many people were saying, like, it was game of the year. Well, but I, it came out in such a banger of a year. Like, it, it's... Right. It wasn't my game of the year because, I mean, God, I mean, we dropped Tears of the Kingdom and Sea of Stars, you know, just to name a couple that I loved. So it wasn't my game mm -hmm. of the year, but it was fantastic. So, yeah, that's high praise. Yeah, definitely really high praise. And we got some more uh, things here coming in on live comments. This is from a Benjamin who responded to you and said, it was the rhythm mechanic. Mm -hmm. I played for two hours, but it kept uh, taking me out of it. Could be my own neuroticism. Yeah, and then Kit said, I'm not big on rhythm games, but it didn't feel punishing for missing beats, just rewarding for hitting him. And that's exactly what I was going to say. Um, that's exactly what it is. Because the world, like everything in the world, including you, does move to the beat, whether you press buttons mm -hmm. on the beat or not. Mm -hmm. But uh, you don't have to hit the beats because all it does is give you – it just rewards you for hitting him, like Kit said. So it gives you more damage or whatever. Um, but it doesn't penalize you for not. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's so you really bad. don't have I mean, to do I, it. I feel like at the same time, though, whether it's where not you're saying like it doesn't really matter if you don't do it, it mm -hmm. just rewards you if you do. I kind of feel like at the same time, though, it's like if you don't get rewarded, that's kind of like also, I don't know. I haven't played the game. I need to play it to really understand exactly the what you mean by that. You're saying like if you're not getting rewarded, you're being punished? Yeah, exactly. You, you, sound, like, <laughs> you sound like my students. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, it's, a, it's a very immature take, but it's just, you know, like I said, I need to play it to really know, but yeah. yeah. 
it's really good. And and you know, Hex right, the controls you know are tight. Like they're they're super responsive. They they feel good. The story was like nothing too serious. You know, like you just mm-hmm. it reminded me of like the old N sixty four games where it's just silly. Um, and, and the another, characters like, were cool. Yeah, and another aspect of it that Heck brought up was the art style about how it's because it's very cell shaded and stuff. Those art styles we know for a fact because we've seen it already play out over like twenty years. You know, since these have been like kind of in heavy use, right. they don't age. They really don't age at all. You can go back and look at a game that's heavily cell shaded, like the one that always comes up in my mind is Wind Waker, mm-hmm. and that game looks beautiful. Even the GameCube version looks beautiful today. And those types of art styles just don't age that very very much at all. Yep, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Yep. Um, now, obviously, a lot of people like this game, but not everyone loved it. Um, we've got a comment here from Crazy Fetch, who <laughs> I, I love this comment just because I, it's got so much going on. <laughs> Says, "Lord, it failed. Get over it. No one buyed it. Um, <laughs> they were lucky it came with Game Pass. Otherwise, the numbers would be." way down yeah i'm jealous that you got to read that comment um (laughs) the nobody bought it is is uh that is that's like that's almost like metroid can't crawl you know like nobody bought it it's 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 iconic isn't it and here's Um, the thing i did buy it i bought it yeah i bought that and maybe i'm the only one but i might be the only one because i know that for a fact um it was announced that it had not sold very well. Not to say it wasn't a success, because it obviously reviewed quite well. It was very prestigious. People really enjoyed it. But mm-hmm. I think that although it is kind of a meme, I mean, we're talking about this, you know, nobody buyed it. But I think in, in reality, not many people did buy the game because it was on Game Pass. And it yeah. one of the, it's one of those games that I don't know how much replay value it has. Um, I don't know that... If it wasn't on Game Pass, would it have done very well? Probably not. I think there is some reality to that. Yeah. Yeah, you may be right. I mean, we've talked about the Game Pass effect, you know, Mm -hmm. a number of times. And Crazy Fetch, you may be right, and I'm sorry that we memed on you. Um, I may be the only one who bought it. I mean, that's a fact. And continuing our little discussion here live, uh, Twitch said, In a way, opportunity cost does technically mean you're being punished by missing beats, but it's not like you need eight mistimed hits to kill a grunt. Yeah, exactly. You don't, you don't need the bonuses, but I guess you're right that if you're not getting the full value, you are being punished. Yeah. And then like talking about, you know, no one buying it, you know, Benjamin said, I only bought it as part of a humble bundle. And Mm -hmm. that's the thing. It's like, I don't know. It is tough to say. I feel like, you know, quirky rhythm games, they can do well. Um, I don't know that this was a financial success, though. I really am not sure. Yeah. I will. I, I do want to point out, and if Heck is watching, which I don't know if he is, but if Heck is watching, he's probably coming unglued right now because you just referred to Hi-Fi Rush very flippantly as a quirky rhythm game, and I really I don't th- think that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean it like it's a – it's what it is. It's a quirky rhythm game. I'm not saying that in a bad way. You know, I'm not saying that that's a – I'm not trying to disparage it, you know. Heck, I tried, man. I'm really not. All right. Um, all right. Let's Ready let's move, move on? on here. Yeah, let's move on. All right. We got a comment here from Vin902 who said, played the first game, loved it. It doesn't need a sequel. Not everything needs to be an IP slash series. And I think there's some truth to that. I definitely think there there's something to be said about a game you just drop and it's badass and then you move on. I think that's mm-hmm. respectable, and you don't mm-hmm. see it very often. Um, and, I, and I'm and i not saying Hi-Fi Rush couldn't fit that mold very well, but I also think the story that they told was real, like self-contained. They didn't really do a whole lot of wider world building, you know, outside of the confines of this, like, compound you spent the whole story in. So there's a lot they could do, and, and I would be interested in giving it a chance because I really liked it, but that's just yeah. me. Yeah, but at the same time, like, I'm not – saying that um, there's anything wrong with this comment because it's true. Like the gaming industry in general is very series slash sequel happy. Mm -hmm. They love to make it because it's a more surefire bet, right? Because we know that people get way more hyped over sequels than they do new IP typically. So 
Like, I get it. We don't have to have that. I get tired of seeing that every game that comes out is either a sequel or if it's not a sequel, it's a remaster of an old game that we've already played. Like, yeah, like that does get annoying. It does I get it. But especially when time, you do a podcast every week and you got to think like, well, <laughs> we got to talk about the remake of the of the week, you know, like, right. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. Silent Hill this time. <laughs> yeah. Totally. And it is kind of annoying that we're not getting more new IP. And I, in a way, I do think that, like, you know, would I rather see a sequel uh, to Hi-Fi Rush from Tango Gameworks? Or would I rather them see them create another new IP that might be equally as good, if not better? Yeah. And maybe not not just a quirky new... rhythm game, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, just stay away from the quirky rhythm games, y'all. <laughs> um, no, but, I mean, I, I might lean towards... Yeah, hit me with something new. I love it when new IP come out, but at the same time, I get it. Like, sequels are way more likely to be a, a financial success than a new mm-hmm. IP. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree, and I, I mean, I agree on both points. I personally would like to see another Hi-Fi Rush spinoff or sequel, mm-hmm. but I, I would give them a chance on either one. I think because I because I liked it so much. Likely, they're going to do both. Honestly, yeah. now yeah. they've been acquired. You know, they're acquired by. Um, Crafton and they're probably and they have the rights to Hi Fi Rush, so they're probably going to do a sequel, but they're probably going to do something new as well. They've done lots of new IP in the past, Mm -hmm. and the previous game before this, uh, you know, what was it, Ghostwire Tokyo? I love that game, it was weird, it wasn't the Mm -hmm. best game ever, uh, it wasn't going to win any awards or be game of the year, but it was good, it was unique. I liked it, yeah. I have that one for free, I got it for free on Epic, so maybe one day I'll play it, yeah. Um, kind of speaking about these series things, we have a, one of the live comments here from Kit who says, um, I think sequels slash IP spinoffs aren't in, in innately bad. Hi-Fi Rush 2 is more likely to be good than Assassin's Creed 24. Too many sequels slash remakes is the real big issue, but not having like a trilogy or sequel. Too many sequels yeah. is the real big issue, but not having yeah. like a trilogy. It's saying like yeah. the problem is having too many sequels, not, yeah. you know, not a trilogy yes. or like you know two or three games. That's okay. okay. But when it gets into like, you know, we're on like the 45th Assassin's Creed game. That's the real problem. Right. I agree with that. Because then you just, I just get tired of it and I don't mm-hmm. want to play it no matter how, how good it looks or what anybody tells me. Like, like we talked yeah. about this, I think maybe last week, like I definitely have like an Assassin's Creed complex and I always say, Man, you know, I love the old ones. I just don't like the new ones. And then Randy always says, Mirage is like the old ones, asshole. And I just, <laughs> you know, I still haven't done it. Like, at this point, it's just an excuse I'm using, and I know that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's <laughs> fair. I mean, because you've got to think, like, oh, it's like the 45th Assassin's Creed game. Like, uh, I'm just I'm just over it. It's, and I right. get it. Yep. Um, and then speaking on Hi-Fi Rush uh, and its likelihood to get a sequel, heck, who said, who's a big fan, said, I think Hi-Fi Rush World is big enough. It could support a sequel. I agree. Yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's go on. We got one more comment here um, from uh, this one's from X Gamer Dave um, X, who said, "I love Tango GameWorks. The Evil Within uh, one and two and Ghostwire Tokyo were awesome, but I didn't like Hi-Fi Rush much." Yeah. Not only does Gamer Dave love Tango GameWorks, Gamer Dave loves X's. Loves them. Mm-hmm. And, but I mean, like at the same time. I haven't played Evil Within, like I said, but I've looked into them. And uh, from what I've seen, we got Evil Within and Ghostwire Tokyo. Both those have horror game theming. Ghostwire mm-hmm. Tokyo, a little more of the like supernatural, not strictly horror, but still got horror vibes. Um, moving from that to Hi-Fi Rush, I mean, you can't talk about different. I mean, those they couldn't be more different than that right there. Well, I mean, you haven't played Hi-Fi Rush, and maybe I've just withheld all the survivor horror elements from you. Um <laughs> But no, you're right. You're right on this one. Uh, it's the, the contrast is kind of insane, honestly. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I could get, I could totally get why you'd be like, eh, I like their other games more than Hi-Fi Rush just because they're yeah. so different. And there's going to be tons of people who are going to be the opposite. Definitely. Love Hi-Fi Rush. Not a big fan of like these more horror based games. Yep. Okay, Randy. Well, that kind of brings us to the end of our first topic. You got any final thoughts before we move on? No, I'm ready. Let's go. Okay, well, I know you're ready, and I know you want to go, but I can't let you go yet, Randy, because i got to tell the people who might not be watching this live on Twitch about our Twitch, okay? We we stream on Twitch every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern. We also recently have started doing the podcast live on Twitch every Sunday 
uh, pretty close to 11 a.m. Eastern. We started a little early today. We started a little late last week. You know how it is. But come hang out. Throw us a follow if you can find it in your heart. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. All right, moving on. So last last week in our bonus video, which is something we do for uh, podcast members, we talked about how there was like one person who said that the Switch 2 or Nintendo's next console, whatever you want to call it, it might not be coming out um, until after this financial or fiscal year, which ends in, I think, like the April of yeah. 2025, yeah. saying it may be later than that. Um, we talked about that, but then all of a sudden, right after that, we get a lot of reports from many more people saying that, yeah, that's what they've been told, that the Nintendo's next console, to not expect it until after, or it, not before April 2025, which is mm-hmm. kind of disappointing in a lot of ways. Um, I I don't know like how dramatic um, I can be here, and it mm-hmm. be uh, you know not a little extra. But I am uh, freaking crushed by this news. I am just my my gut has sank. My heart is is has sank through my through the bottom of my body. <laughs> really? <laughs> what a weird thing to say. Because then I, about halfway to through what I was trying to say, I realized <laughs> that what the bottom of my body was. And <laughs> yeah, your toes, your toes. Uh, yes, you're right. That's yeah. what I was thinking. Yes. Um, I mean, like, I know, like, okay, we were all hoping for like just a a mimicry of the original switch. It was announced at the end, towards the end of a year. And then it released in, I think it was sometime in March of the following year. So Mm -hmm. a really short window, but it came out in March. I think everyone was hoping again for a nice March release. It just feels very poetic. It does. It's also sooner. (laughs) Yeah. Well, now they're saying to not ex- expect it this fiscal year, which is going to end at the end of March. So it may be that it just comes out a month later in April, or it could mean that it's coming out later. We don't really yes. know. Yeah, no, we don't. We, we can only fear uh, what we do not know in this case. Mm-hmm. Um, I, but, I, you know, what I keep kind of coming back to that, that gives me solace is that I know that much sooner than that, we will get that announcement trailer. We'll get that direct, you know, we'll get whatever we're going to get. And then we'll at least know what it is and at right. least have something to kind of latch onto. And I think I'll be able to sustain myself on that, on that hopium. Yeah. You know? Whatever it is, whatever it is, at least we have, no, I think the not knowing is kind of worse than like knowing for sure. Like it's coming late. Like we don't, we just don't know. So it just, I don't know. Yes, and we've got a couple live comments here. Heck said, honestly, I want them to take their time and release a good product, and I mm-hmm. agree, and I will also wait because I have no choice, but I, I, it has been a lot of time already, and, and I, you know, something that I heard the other day or read or something, I can read, yes, um, the other day it was that the longer they wait to drop this, the more outdated the technology will be I know. For its entire lifetime, you know, and we know that know. it's not exactly going to drop and be like the leading console as far as power goes. Right. And that's not mm-hmm. Nintendo's thing. And they make it work. Like, I'm not mad about that. But the longer they wait, the the bit, the more behind they will inherently be, especially when the next console is where the switch is now. And that yeah. kind of scares me. I mean, like. We have this lo- this comment here from uh, Benjamin who said the switch is getting long in the tooth. It's been long in the tooth like its whole life. Like it's felt old. I don't know that it ever really felt like, man, this is some really cutting edge tech. It didn't. When it came out in 2017, we were like, well, you know, it's using some tech from a few years ago, and yeah. it just gotten worse and worse and worse. But and it, it hasn't really mattered because it's all about the games. And it's the way they use the tech, which is like Nintendo's whole yeah. philosophy, especially when yeah. it comes to handhelds. I never am able to remember this guy's name, but there's that quote about like something about how, you know, technological innovation comes from like efficiency of old tech and how you use something like that. But it, it's about the game and watch, you know. And uh, mm-hmm. they really do still do that, and they make it work. Like I said, they do mm-hmm. make it work. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, we got some really interesting stuff just coming in live here. You know, like uh, Kit saying that um, the whole release it now, we want it as soon as possible thing has resulted in some poor products. Um, I mean, yeah, we've seen that, especially in like very cutting edge tech, 
We see that. I mean, I think the first thing that comes to mind is the AI pins. You know, like we got to figure out a way to make AI something that we can use right now. And it just wasn't ready. Right. And it's like they've been horrible products that are way overpriced and do nothing. Definitely. And then, you know, I mean, you get things like, uh, in a different kind of way to look at it, you get like PC manufacturers that put out a new laptop every single year with like extremely incremental upgrades that maybe aren't necessary from year to year. Mm-hmm. One thing we can at least rest our hat on is that we're going to get a big jump. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get a big jump here. I, but I, I do get the concern. I mean, like Dan said here in this comment, uh, that the biggest concern is that the text can be outdated. I, I don't think that that should be a concern. I think that should be an expectation with Nintendo. I really, I don't know. It's always been. Have, have we ever really seen besides maybe the GameCube? GameCube, yeah. Not yeah, since the I mean, GameCube. Like, yeah, exactly. That's the only one we've ever seen where it felt like, oh, this is some pretty, you know, new stuff yeah maybe the touch screen on the ds i remember that feeling like it was pretty high tech at the time because touch screens really weren't everywhere Mm -hmm. so maybe that but that's just like one aspect of it you know yeah 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 exactly and that yeah that's just one aspect of a system that maybe otherwise didn't feel that way exactly yeah yeah um but moving back to our conversation about uh, when will we get this next thing from Nintendo? Um, we kind of wanted to feel out what the general gaming audience, where they thought it was going to land. We, had a, we put out a poll saying, do you expect Nintendo to release their next console in the first half of 2025? Oh, no, I'm struggling, Randy. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. There you we went go. backwards, y'all. Yeah, I went backwards. There you go. I got to figure out a better way to label the, uh, <laughs> the stream deck <laughs> so that, that when I jump back to the general scene, that doesn't happen. Or I could just count, but you know how hard that is for me. Counting stuff. It's all good. All right, so we got a poll here. We said, do you expect Nintendo to release their next console in the first half of 2025? And at 42%, people said yes. I think they will. And at 58%, people said no. I think the successor to the Nintendo Switch will be later than that. Yeah. And to me, this is very just like, I mean, obviously it's not 50-50, but in my mind, it might as well be. Mm-hmm. I think we have more pessimists out there than than optimists, which is fair. I mean, like, yeah. but the truth is, no one really knows, and it reminds me so much of when the original Switch, like, was coming out. The rumor mill for that thing was like putting it all over the place. We never knew when that thing was going to come out, and until we actually hear from Nintendo, we just won't. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. and that's that's what I'm talking about. How like just not knowing. I think hurts me more than them just finally telling me like, no, dude, you're not going to get this till next Christmas. You know, like <laughs> just tell me and tell me what mm-hmm. to expect. Yeah. There's Give me all a trailer kinds of stuff. to watch like on repeat. Yeah. Well, there's all kinds of reasons that they might be delaying this. Um, you know, like this comment here, we have a live comment from heck who says Nintendo also seems pretty adverse uh, to any sort of dev crunch or employee crunch. So that's a factor too. And like that is, they have been really open and adamant lately, especially over the last number of years, that yeah. they don't want their employees to put in any kind of crazy hours, no crunch. You know, they don't want that crunch culture at all anymore. Mm-hmm. They've had it in the past. They want to get me over that. And it's led to games like tears of the kingdom being delayed, like, multiple times because they just wanted to make sure they put out the best product um, and however long that takes. Yeah. And I think, you know, generally it works for them because eventually you mm-hmm. drop tears of the kingdom and everybody's happy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's, let's move on to a comment here. We have um, one from watch and learn 91 who said, I figure uh, announce in April or June and launch in October in time for holidays to have a strong opening sales. That's like the traditional way to do it, right? Like release around October, like right before the holidays. Yes. And you know, something that I've been thinking about, cause it, for a while, everybody was saying, Oh, we're going to learn about this system. Like August, September, October, we're going to learn about it in the fall, you know, mm-hmm. and then it's going to come out early next year. Um, I, I wonder like, how would that, you know, affect their holiday sales of switch stuff, you know, consoles, notwithstanding. You know, if you announce the next system right now before the holidays, Mm -hmm. are you kind of cannibalizing your own Christmas sales? I think maybe. I think it's very possible. Unless they announce that it's fully backwards compatible, which Mm -hmm. I I expect it to be. I think if they do that, then you feel a little less risky getting into the Switch because you at least know any games that you buy, you're still going to be able to, you know, play on your next system if you decide to go with the Switch 2 or 
you know, the successor to the Switch. Um, I think that helps. And we know that Nintendo thinks that they're going to sell a lot of Switches this holiday. So you might be on to something that maybe they are not planning on announcing it until January. Like maybe wait until the, you know, uh, Christmas is over, come in at the very beginning of the year and say, let's announce it. Or they yeah. could, like this comment here says, they could wait even later. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of think Nintendo does really want to beat the PlayStation too. You know, like I, I think it's yeah. a thing they actually really want to do. And so I don't think, part of me doesn't think they will do anything that might hurt that. But if they think it's like a surefire thing, then they might. I, I don't know. I don't know how confident they are over there. Yeah. Probably, and just pretty, to make it, probably pretty dang. To clarify, what Daniel's saying here is that uh, they to beat the PlayStation 2 in lifetime sales, right now the PlayStation 2 is the best-selling console of all time. You're saying that Nintendo wants to have the best-selling console of all time with the Switch, and they yes. think they can do it. And if, you know, and if I look at this from a very um, non-emotional way, as an eSports coach at a school, if they uh, announce the, the <clears throat> successor to the Nintendo Switch – before you know in time for it to be on sale for a holiday season whether that would be this year which obviously it's not or next year it's a lot more likely that i'm going to get kids that actually get that system <laughs> yeah um well here's my thought I, I think that all sounds good and like i think the traditional setup of like having your console release around the holidays it makes total sense i get why you would want to do that there's one big thing in my mind that thinks that maybe they wouldn't try to do that this particular year 2025 and that is Grand Theft Auto 6 is coming mm. out holiday 2025. And it's going to be hard to compete for any game and company. If you release any game or maybe even a console around the same time as GTA 6, I think you're going to hurt yourself a little bit. That may not be the same for Nintendo because I know that like GTA 6's audience and Nintendo audience, they don't have too much overlap. But the truth is, is like, GTA 6, I think, is big enough to where it's going to have more overlap than people think. You don't think GTA 6 is going to be a, a launch day title for the next Nintendo console? <laughs> oh, you know, I hadn't considered that. I hadn't considered that. But uh, if they do that, then you know what? Then Nintendo is going to sell these Switch 2s like crazy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's kind of what I've been thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be the literal wildest thing in the entire world. If they're like, look, we're coming out holiday 2025 and our launch title, GTA 6. That would Man. be, <laughs> you talk that's, about. That's where I would buy it too. <laughs> if, it, would, if it was, you, absolutely. It would be the worst version by far. That's all, But that's all I'm going to want to play games on when it, when it launches. Like I'm not going to want to touch anything else. Yeah. It'll launch a GTA five instead says Dan. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that'll be it. It'll that, that may actually happen. Like genuinely that could happen. Yeah. Um, I would, I wouldn't be surprised at all if GTA five came to switch to, uh, not at all. <laughs> we got another live comment here from kid who said, can't wait to play GTA six at five FPS on my switch Two. <laughs> what is a switch to? Right. Although I've said switch to multiple times and you have not corrected me. So, uh, let's see. I know got, there's no point. Let's move on here. We got a, a comment from uh, Gaming Hawk who says, yep. Some people have been saying it's coming out this year since 2021. I'll hold my speculation and just wait for Nintendo to announce it. Um, Daniel, I'm sorry I just stole that comment from you. I realized the next one was supposed to be yours. Well, I'm going to be honest with you, Randy. Um, I wasn't really sure if it was mine or yours, and I was just <laughs> glad somebody started reading it. <laughs> um, but Gaming Hawks has a point here. Uh, yeah, I mean, people have been saying it's coming out this year for quite a while, and and I mean, you're not wrong, uh, but but it really seemed likely this time. You know, it really <laughs> seemed like it was, okay? And I don't. I, I think that is a little bit of an exaggeration. We've been saying Switch Pro since 2021. Actually, we've been saying, saying Switch, Switch Pro, Pro since 2018. Uh, maybe like earlier than that. Yeah, we've been saying Switch Pro forever. And I do think I'm one of the believers that think that Switch Pro was going to happen, and the pandemic nuked it. I really mm -hmm. do think that it was going to happen. Yeah, Randy's. I don't know if y'all can tell, but he's got his tin foil hat on, and uh, but I kind of agree with him on this one, and that hurts me to say. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, like we never did get switch pro and it made so much sense. And it it's did. so weird. We never, so we weird. never got the switch pro. We did get the switch OLED, which taught both of us. I think what an OLED screen means. 
Yeah, I had never had an OLED screen device before the Switch OLED, and it literally blew my mind at how it, it, it is like I realized that way more than resolution, like picture quality, the colors, like that's it is almost like infinitesimally more important than your resolution. Like I didn't, yes. I didn't realize that. I didn't either. I remember, I think you got yours maybe one day before me, didn't you? Or maybe you just got it earlier in the same day. I got, I I got it earlier it in the same day. Because I, I went, went after got school. It that morning, you went after school. I went in the morning, like very first thing and picked it yeah. up. Yeah. And I remember getting home with it and turning it on. And then I called you and I don't even think you said hello. I think you just answered the phone with like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> right. And we were just both like, this is amazing. And then we talked for like 30 seconds and then we were both like, okay, I'm going to go play with this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it looks it looks so good. It, it makes me uh, like, I know how expensive OLED TVs are, but it makes me think like next time I get a TV, I might go OLED just because, or, or a computer monitor, you know, like anything, just because it looks mm-hmm. just so good. It's like indescribable almost. Yeah, it really is. And, but... But you're not wrong. Like, God, is that expensive? You know, yeah, getting a, me and Daniel, we simp for OLED all day. 100% I simp for I, Can I get that on a shirt? Yeah. Will, or simps for OLED, maybe? Maybe just I simp for OLED. Yeah, I don't, I would say. <laughs> I, don't know yeah. how, I don't know how you want to phrase it, but. Simps for OLED sounds like a club. Yeah, it does. That, mm-hmm. hey, if anyone's out there naming a club, we just helped you. Yeah. Simps for OLED. Yeah. So, um, Daniel, we got one more comment here. This one is definitely 100% yours. Take it away. This is from Mr. McMustache, who said, Switch to twice the drift, twice the crashing, twice the price, half the fun. And I did some quick math here. um, And I just want to let you know that I believe that would be the Switch 4. Because 1 times 2 times 2 times 2 divided by 2 is 4. Point G&G, boys. Um, Daniel's a math teacher, y'all. So don't be throwing no math out thinking it's going to be unchecked. Daniel's mm-hmm. going to check that stuff. And I can do multiplication. That's what he does for a living. Yep. Um, but to kind of address all the things here, you know, like, obviously, <laughs> twice the drift. That's obviously a joke. I mean, like, maybe it'll have drift. I don't, I don't think it'll be twice as bad. I Man. hope not. Hopefully, hopefully Nintendo has learned. I hope so. I mean, I'm not expecting like hall sticks or anything, and I don't even care. Like that, that's fine. You can you can make perfectly fine sticks without using hall technology. It's fine. But all of them drift. It, it's funny now. We talk about Nintendo because they obviously were the biggest ones, but PlayStation with the PS5 controller has been having a horrible time of drift. I mean, I don't know if it's been as widespread as the Joy-Con, but it's been bad. Uh, yeah. I, and you know what's funny is I still have never experienced Joy-Con drift. And I use Have you them. experienced drift in any any controller you've ever owned? Yeah, well, only like back in the day. I remember some older controllers I had that drifted. Mm-hmm. Like an N64 controller, maybe a GameCube controller, you know, some things mm-hmm. like that. But uh not in modern times, I don't think. But I'm really careful with my sticks. That's right. <laughs> you should see you guys should see how gingerly Daniel handles the sticks. <laughs> um, okay. But um we have we have a live comment here, a question. This one's from Benjamin, who says, what's the probable price? And then he supposed it's maybe $3.99. Um, I, think, I would love $3.99. I think that's probably it. I think, yeah, I think 400 is very uh, probable. Mm-hmm. But I think 4 to 5 is probably where I think it'll land, somewhere in there. Things have gone up. Things have mm-hmm. gone up. And, it, and I know, like, I mean, I know what they're saying, you know, power, what the rumors are saying power wise is like, you know, PS4 pro territory or whatever, which is basically like steam deck equivalent. Yep. And I just don't, and I just don't know how aggressively Nintendo will price it. I guess quite aggressively. They're a huge company. Um, that's kind of why mm-hmm. valve is able to do that with the steam deck. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking four to five. Yeah, I think four. I wouldn't be surprised if it's five. I'd be excited at four. I wouldn't expect it any cheaper than four, just to be honest. I don't think we're going to see another $300 console. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Heck, coming in with a live burn on Nintendo saying 500 for some outdated tech. Woo. <laughs> yeah. And, like, it's just, like, handhelds are expensive. They, they're more expensive than the, their console, like, purely console counterparts. They just are. Yeah. They have a screen. You know, they have... You have to tap. You have to. I do know more, they have a screen. Yeah, they're more engineered. You know. 
Definitely. With, a, with, with something like a box, like look at the Xbox Series X. I'm not saying like that hasn't been well engineered, but being able to put something in a box and with a big fan on it is not ear, nearly the same kind of engineering challenge as doing something mm -hmm. like a handheld. You know? Right. It just isn't. The, the cooling is definitely more complicated. Yes. And, and more important, maybe. Yeah, well, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and 100%. you know, Randy's on record saying he would spend nine hundred dollars on the next Nintendo console. It, it just keeps going up every time Daniel brings it up. Um, nine hundred dollars. Next, he's gonna be saying, "I'm on record saying I'd spend a grand on it." Easy, what? No questions asked. That's ridiculous, dude. I, I cannot <laughs> believe you said that. You heard it here, guys. Randy said it. He'll spend a grand on the successor to the Nintendo Switch. But I do want to address. There's a couple things in this comment that we haven't talked about. Which is, we talked about the price. Mm -hmm. We we haven't talked about the crashing. I don't know if it's just me, but oh, the crash. Very rarely have I had games crash on Switch. Not in, I've had it happen, but not any more than my PS Five or my Xbox. Like I haven't had it. It's normally about the game. It doesn't have anything to do with the system. Yeah, I haven't experienced a whole lot of that at all. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's definitely happened, but not even enough there, for me to remember the last time it did. Yeah, there are probably games that crash frequently, but I would. I mean, I don't want to just be, you know, like vouching for Nintendo. I don't, you know, I know they don't need me to do that, um, nor should I, because mm -hmm. they're a multi-billion dollar company. But yeah, um, but we simp for Nintendo. I know we do, but it's like, yeah, I mean, I've definitely had some stuff crash on Switch. I'd be interested in seeing what other people think. We have some comments rolling in about that right now. <laughs> yeah, Dan said, do. I don't think I've ever had a game crash on Switch, and mine is an OG. Yeah, and Heck said, I've had my first gen Switch still, and maybe two or three total crashes in its whole lifespan. Yeah, see? Yeah. yeah, and Benjamin actually, you know, coming in with something that I've heard a lot of people talking about throughout the Switch's lifespan is just how poorly the eShop runs, uh, slow load speeds specifically. Uh, I hope they sort that out too, Benjamin. I, I did a stream once where I went and compared the Nintendo eShop to, uh, you know, the PlayStation Store and the Xbox Store. And honestly, they're all pretty equal. The Switch, mm -hmm. I actually like the way they have it set up. I know that it's not the best, but they have a nice featured section that really does shine some spotlight on not only like some bigger games in the system, but a lot of indies and stuff. I think they do a really good job of showcasing that. You like the featured the, section? Is that what you said? Yeah, I love the featured section. I bet. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but the but the real problem with the eShop is that one, its its design mm -hmm. is very basic. And then what do you get for that? It runs slow. And it doesn't even, I don't understand why it runs slow, but it does. I have heard that it has something to do with the, like maybe the file format or something about the way that it loads the thumbnails. Like something about it is really inefficient is what I saw once. I don't, yeah. I can't explain it to you. It's, I don't know what it, I don't remember what it was, but it was something like something that. Something about it is it's really slow. And that is mm -hmm. absolutely, the, you try to use it and it's just, it's just not fun to use. Mm -hmm. And that is, at the end of the day, when you're going to buy stuff from a store, if it feels janky, if it feels yeah. like it just isn't put together well, you're not going to want to buy things. I mean, you're, you're surely not going to want to browse it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Dan said the store is terrible, but Nintendo has always had a terrible store. You're not wrong there. But I think back in the day, I didn't care because, like, I just thought that's how it had to be. And now I'm like, it don't have to be like that, you know? No. Also, yeah, no. I don't want to gl uh, gloss over this, Randy. I would just like to urge you to check out the featured section of the Nintendo eShop sometime and see if you still love it. <laughs> Why is that? Let's just say it's a little spicy these days. Oh, no, you're talking about the new games, not the featured. Oh, I am talking about the new games. Oh, man. Yeah, new game section. I mean, like, because you have, and it is. You go is in the spicy. new game section, and it is, like... Because there are these people putting out these basically these porno games, and they put them out every day. And not only – they'll just re-release the same game with a new edition. It has like a different DLC tacked onto it. And they'll release it every single day. It is like wild. And the same game. It'll just be, and they do it so that every, we go to the new games, you always see it. And it's some porn game. Like what in the world is going on here? When are, when are we going to see like a, uh, you know, a gaming gig short on, on one of those? I ain't playing one of those. I ain't giving them my money. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. They're only like Dan saying in the comments here. They're only a dollar though. So That's I mean, what I'm like, you know, <laughs> we can reimburse you out of the Twitch funds. You know. Yeah. 
right. <laughs> Just kidding. No, we can't. No, we're not doing that. Okay, we're not doing that. Uh, Randy, you got anything for us on the uh, anything left for us on the the Nintendo no, I news? Feel like I, I, I've run out of gas on Nintendo news, but I'm excited to move on to our next next topic. But before we do that. Um, I want to let you guys all know about our Discord server. Look, we've got one of the most chill, calm, like most accepting Discord servers that Discord has, period. Uh, and we would love for you to be a part of it. Obviously, it's free to join. There's an invite link uh, in the description of this podcast, wherever you want to get it. Come hang out, talk games with us. It's fun. Absolutely. So our next topic is about this game that nobody's supposed to know about. Okay. It's called Deadlock, apparently. And allegedly, it's Valve's next game. Allegedly. This is a really weird story because basically Valve has been cooking up this game. I think like two or three months ago, it got leaked that there's this new game that they haven't announced and it is called Deadlock. And not only is it out there, people are playing it and they have not said a word about it, which has got to be the weirdest, like thing that I could imagine a company doing to, you know, get, let people know about their game. They're just saying nothing. They're like pretending it doesn't exist. This is, ma- in my opinion, masterful marketing. You think so? I haven't yes. thought about it that way. This is the same as when, like, listen, have you ever seen Michael Jackson's Super Bowl halftime show performance? I have, but it's been a very long time. Well, if you remember, at the beginning of it, he, like, takes the stage and he just stands there. He doesn't dance. He doesn't sing. He doesn't say, how the hell are you? He just stands there still as a statue until the crowd is like frothing at the mouth. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's (laughs) what Valve is doing. They want it. They're just, Valve's just standing there and we're all losing our minds and I'm here for it. I would love to lose. If anybody has an invite to deadlock, I would love to lose my minds with you. I'm, I'm buying into the hub. I'm buying in hundred percent. Yeah, so this is what they're doing. Basically, they un- they haven't announced this game, but you can play it, and they're letting anybody play it. All you have to do is get invited to play it, and you can get invited by other people who have played it. So it's just like <gasps> it's like a continuously, Heck. yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> it it just keeps evolving, and what is happening is that like Thank I, you. I hadn't thought about it this way in my mind. I thought this is super weird. Like, why would they do this? But you might be right. Maybe they're like, look, we can do some viral marketing here. This can be like the secret game that no one knows about. And if you know, you know. Um, maybe right. they're just geniuses. They maybe are geniuses. You really just realize Valve's geniuses. Well, I didn't. I really thought this was super weird. Um, honestly, in my mind, I thought, well, maybe they're just not sure about this game. And maybe they're just like testing the waters because they're not sure. Like, Because it is a... It's kind of like a hybrid game, from what Mm -hmm. I understand. It's kind of like a hero shooter slash MOBA. Yeah. And, you know, maybe they're like, look, people are tired of those games. Uh, Do we really want to be, like, how well will this do? I thought that maybe they were just unsure about it. Mm -hmm. But maybe I'm wrong. Well, and I do agree that if I was going to pick a genre, this Mm -hmm. isn't really the one I would pick. But um, it's been a while, you know, since Valve made a game. Mm Mm-hmm. And well, we got not too long ago. We got the new, uh, what is it, the CS game? Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. CS but I, two. I, I wasn't as interested in that one. Um, mm-hmm. You're right. And then before that, we got Aperture Desk Job when the Steam Deck launched, and it was really high quality. Obviously, mm-hmm. Portal. You know, I haven't played any Half Lives, but Half Lives. But uh, I'm I'm in on this. You know, I want to play the game that doesn't exist. And apparently I'm going to get to. Yeah, and a lot of people are playing this. I mean, like, without them doing anything, Deadlock is already in, like, one of the most played games on Steam right now. It had a peak concurrent count, I think, in the last, maybe in the last week, like, over 18,000 people are playing it, which obviously isn't huge numbers, but I think it's in, like, the top 100 games being played on Steam. Mm -hmm. And that's wild when you figure the fact that no, they haven't, they haven't even, even announced this game exists. Yeah, they're not even saying it exists, and it that's 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 why I think it's masterful. I mean, yeah, and very unique. I don't know any. I don't know of a game that has taken this approach yet, and uh, I think it's. I just think it's kind of interesting. I may play it, yeah. and not like it, but I yeah. do think and it's it really, interesting. 
and it really is kind of, oh my gosh, Kit says it had a 41K 24-hour peak. So maybe we're talking about old numbers here. Wow. Is it is it 41K? If that's the case, then the numbers, numbers have doubled, over doubled since this last report came out. That is wild. That's nuts. It's growing. I it's love growing. that they that they just like let you invite people. That's why that's another reason it's so masterful. Like it's like it's like fake exclusivity, you know? Yeah. That, and it cre- is- it creates like FOMO, but it's like FOMO that you can overcome very easily. Yeah, super easy. Um now, you know, I know a lot of people still don't know about that this game, and the reason I know is because we put out a poll um 2 days ago asking are you one of the people who have been able to play Deadlock? And that's Valve's unannounced hero shooter slash MOBA. Mm-hmm. At 3%, people's 3 for Dale percent, sorry, uh, people said, yes, I've played it. At 21%, people said, no, I haven't played it. And at 76%, people said the right answer, which is, I have never even heard of this game. And, and it's still, that is crazy. So, obviously, this, you know, these things that we talked about, the number of 18,000 concurrent players was two days ago which is when I put out this poll. Now we're potentially looking at uh, steam DB saying it's got a 41,000 peak over the past 24 hours, Mm -hmm. which is over double that this game is growing rapidly. And, um, the FOMO, like you said, Daniel, the FOMO is strong on this one, I think. And the more people learn about it, it's going to, I, I've changed my mind completely about this. You want to play it now? I do. I don't want to play it. And what's really weird is like, I, I I don't even know that I like either of the genres it's pulling from. Like we yeah. have a comment here from Easy Free who said I've played it. It's like Overwatch plus a MOBA, um, and to me, you put those two things together, and I'm like, eh, nah, I'll pass. I have never played a MOBA. I know that yeah. League is the primary example. Yeah, and then like um, Dota, Smite. Like there's some other games that are some big ones. Yeah, but I know about Overwatch. I haven't played it because I never mm-hmm. thought I would like it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you played other some... hero shooters, though. I have, and they've never really stuck with me. I think they can be fun. I think that they're fun, but they don't. I don't. They don't stick with me. But when yeah. I play like a little bit of them, I'm like, "Ooh, this is fun," and then I just like move on because I don't know something about them makes me not want to keep playing them. But they're fun when I do. Yeah. Here's my question: um, How much content is there to play right now? I'm, I'm sure it's, it's a that? live service game, so it's probably infinitely playable. You just keep playing it, right? Because if it's a MOBA and if mm-hmm. it's like a hero shooter, those games, they don't really have yeah. an end. You just keep playing them You just because you're against – it's one team against the other. So, you know, you just – So do we essentially going. just have like an unpolished and unfinished version of a complete game right now? Is that what we have that hasn't been announced? <laughs> this is so freaking weird. <laughs> it's really weird. I don't know. I know that – I don't know. We have some comments from people here who have played it and maybe they can give us some insight. Um, like we have a live comment here from heck who says, I think it still needs a lot of polish. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but I don't know. We have it, this one here. Uh, th- <laughs> kind this of short circuited there, Gampa. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just so, you know, he wants to play to it so bad this. now. I don't know what to think about it. Daniel, will you read this comment from FX Frank who has played it? Uh, yeah, I'd be happy to read this comment from FX Frank, who has played it. Uh, FX Frank said, it sucks, in my opinion. The UI is too cluttered. Enemies are tanks as F. Art style is genuinely horrible. No joke. Music is generic and bland, and the graphics tie in with the art style. Imagine the clay look of Paladins, but somehow worse. If Valve was smart, they'd can it and do something better, because this ain't it. Yeah. And I mean, like, I've definitely heard from some people that it's not great, but I also was browsing uh, the the Reddit, the subreddit that was set up for this game. Mm-hmm. And you go on there, and people love the game. So, you know, obviously, yeah. the people who are going to flock to a subreddit about a game likely are going to enjoy the game. So maybe that's a little, I don't know. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, I would... Heck just made a great point here live. He said, hey, Sea of Thieves was uggo and busted when it started too. Uh, and I would just like to counter that by saying, uh, Sea of Thieves may not be uggo anymore, but it is it is more busted than it ever was, it seems. So, And we still play that. I don't think Sea of Thieves was ever uggo. I remember watching the reviews like when it first came out and thinking the game looked cool. I don't remember it looking ugly in any way. Maybe I'm just wrong. I don't know. Yeah. But the point is, is like, uh, you know, FX Frank's, 
comment here. You could be right on everything, but pe- some people are still going to love it. So, yeah, I can see yeah. people being on both sides, no doubt. Yeah, and it, it is still early. I mean, like you know, like like heck here in the comments is saying it feels a bit janky control wise. Like mm-hmm. maybe they're still working out the kinks, um, but I don't know. Would they be smart to do something else? Maybe they were like, look, if we just if we traditionally advertise this, we say, hey, we got a new game. It's a hero shooter MOBA and they come out with it. They may have come across like, um, you know, what is, what is the, uh, um, uh, Concord. They may have had mm-hmm. Concord syndrome or people's like, no, I don't want this. I don't want yeah. to play this at all. That's what's so they... genius about this is that Concord is literally, I mean, we w- right here on the gaming gig podcast, we named it yawn cord. We literally sank that game, you know, right <laughs> yeah. here with the G and G bump. Um, but somehow Valve, good guy Valve, has circumvented the whole issue by not saying a damn thing. I know. It's they so made weird. me want to play the same genre of game that another company made me ruin with a, a, a nickname. Right. And I, I mean, I really, it. I really do think, see, that's what I thought. I thought, well, they obviously know that if they come out and just like announce this game, it's going to be like one of the most disliked videos because that's what people don't want from Valve. They don't want another hero shooter. Like no one wants that. We're sick and tired of it. Although they can be fun games, the market is just overcrowded. Yep. Um, and people are just tired of them. Not saying that's a bad genre. It just we've had too much. Mm-hmm. Um, and people wouldn't like it, but they're doing it in an interesting way. Yeah, and that you know that that heck saying it's just FOMO here, like. He's right. It is just FOMO, but it's such a unique way of creating FOMO. <laughs> yeah, it really is. I just think whether or not the game's good, or even if you want to play it or don't want to play it, I do think this the this not marketing marketing is interesting. I do too. I think it's very interesting, and I hadn't even considered it until the podcast today. Mm-hmm. Um, but now that I've thought about it this way, I, I tend to think that it's a calculated decision. I thought it was them not being like... Uh, Maybe it is a little bit of both because I thought, you know, they're just not very confident with this game. So they're kind of just like testing the waters. And it may be that they weren't super confident and they were like, look, maybe if we do this weird strategy, maybe Mm -hmm. it'll be different enough to make it so that people are interested. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Pretty wild. Pretty wild. We got one last comment about this subject. Um, This one is from Daku YRS, who said, never heard about it. But I'm one who doesn't care about online games anyway and never play them, so I'm not their target audience to begin with. You totally went Samurai Jack on on this person's name. <laughs> well, hey, I think that By was the, the intention. I think that was the intention. <laughs> okay, good. Um, um, but yes, Doc, who, um, you know, we don't always care about online games anyway. We kind of found Sea of Thieves and never really mm-hmm. found one that catches me, you know, quite like that. So I, I don't know that I'm the target audience either, but... I'm there. I don't know what to say. Isn't that like most people? They have like, they have their one, yeah, you know, live service online game that they play, and they don't play. They don't care about any of the others because they already have their game, and that's the I whole. Like, that's the whole reason that each one fails, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, I think that's probably pretty common, but it doesn't yeah. stop everybody from trying to be the next one. I know because when they hit, they hit so hard. Mm-hmm. Um, they rake in so much money when they do hit. Everyone's so tempted to keep making them, even though like ninety nine percent of them flop. Right. But can Valve, Valve's already pulled off in the past. They pull off live service games and, um, you know, obviously they don't have one quite like deadlock. So they're kind of filling a niche that they don't personally have. But I mean, I don't know. Does anybody know if deadlock runs on steam deck yet? It is a valve game. It has to, right? (laughs) I would think so. It has to. I would think so. I've seen gameplay and it does not look any more, you know, graphically demanding than a Fortnite or okay. you know, like it, it, it does not, it is not like, wow, this game looks so good. Okay. Um, it really isn't. In fact, I'd well, say that, it probably looks worse than something like a Fortnite. Yeah. Well, that's the first thing I'm going to try it on. Yeah. Thanks to hex and butt. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm sure it does. I just would, I would be very surprised if it didn't run on steam deck. I just think it's valve, right? They, they kind of don't have a choice. Yeah. Um, yeah, Kit said, I think I've seen somebody mention it in the Steam Deck subreddit, but there wasn't much detail. Yeah, Kit, mm-hmm. I love that you're like populating the Steam Deck subreddit now. I've been reading that thing for a long time. I love the Steam Deck subreddit. 
Never been. Never been there. But uh, guys, Daniel, I think that brings us to the end. Do you it. Got anything last thing to say here about deadlock? No, uh, I, I, you know, I've just, I've convinced myself that I'm excited about it this morning and, um, that's, uh, you know, I'm going to try it. I'm going to get on my steam deck and I'm going to download it. So I'm excited. That's all I know. And, and I know it's just FOMO and I know that I fell victim to, to the clearly calculated, uh, marketing strategy and I don't care. Yeah. Well, we have something we like to do for those of you who watch on YouTube. We do this thing called the three for Dale club. And basically we just want to thank you for making it all the way to the end of the podcast and supporting us. And look, here's what you got to do. All you do is drop us a comment and in the comment, leave the phrase three for Dale. That's right. Three for Dale is our special code phrase. And we look for it when we're making the outlines for these podcasts. And uh, we use that as a uh, cue to shout you out right here. And today's three for Dale club is Land Stallings. Some people call him Dale himself. He's been there since, been here since the beginning, and we love him. Yes, thank you, Landon, for supporting us. But we also want to give an extra special, you know, thank you to our YouTube members. Look, every week after the podcast is over, we record a bonus episode exclusively for the members of the podcast YouTube channel. If you're interested in getting that uh, bonus video, check out the join button on obviously the YouTube version of this podcast. Mm -hmm. And then if you join, you are able to get that bonus video every week. That's right. We are uh, today on the bonus episode. We're going to talk about Witcher 4 rumors. So that should be fun. And here yeah. are our podcast members. We have Heck Vedica, Landon Stallings, Ga, and Kitticalism. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you guys for keeping us. And like Daniel said, we're going to be talking about Witcher 4 rumors because uh, the voice actor behind Geralt has come out and given us some really nice details. Well, actually, some maybe not so nice for some people. <laughs> some people may be very disappointed about what he has to say. <laughs> but yeah. we now know something about The Witcher 4 that we didn't know previously, and we're going to be talking about that in our bonus video. That's right. All right, guys. Well, I think that does it for us. So until next time, I'm Randy. And I'm Daniel. And this has been Gaming Gig. Peace out. <laughs>